Okay, I have a new circuit that I've made today. Uh, it's I call it the CFL tube driver. Uh, basically, it's a circuit to make use of a CFL light bulbs when they burn out. Uh, basically, when one of these light bulbs burn out, it's usually the circuitry at the base of the bulb that usually goes. The tube, as long as there's a vacuum inside it, uh, will remain. Uh, viable. It can still work. So I've created a circuit to replace this circuitry and to use a AA battery pack as the power source instead of the wall. So basically this is uh, quite like my other circuits. Uh, a 555 timer is going to send a square wave to a transistor. The transistor is a switch which will allow power from a battery pack to energize a primary on a standard homemade transformer. I made the transformer myself. Now this circuit is a little uh, different than my usual. Usually I'm dealing with single inductors and with a single inductor uh, I'm creating electromagnetic flyback voltage. Now this is a different animal. Uh, duty cycle is most important when driving a single inductor. This is not a single inductor, this is a transformer. So duty cycle is going to be 50% and I will be altering the frequency to get that transformer to perform uh, to its peak efficiency. So let's swing around and take a look at the circuit over here. I've got it set up. Let me show you the operation. This battery pack is at 10.75 volts and it lights up a CFL real easy and by altering frequency I can brighten the bulb or dim the bulb and also with the dimming or brightening is less or more current usage so at its current level just starting out, I'm just below 300 milliamps on a 10.75 battery pack and it lights the bulb nicely. It's a little on the dim side for realistic practical use, but it works well. As that bulb uh, warms up, it will get brighter. And I can see it already straining to get brighter. Let me alter my frequency slightly as slightly as I can. And I'm letting more current come into the bulb. It's getting brighter. And pow! It really cranked up there. Now it's quite bright. Just below 700 milliamps. So it does take some power to get this bulb to light. It also takes uh, basically uh, a hell of a lot of voltage to make the CFL bulb go. And only about 5 milliamps. I think I'm actually about 1,000 volts at about 5 milliamps. And let me back off the frequency again. This is the 18 kilohertz range. Once that bulb gets warm and gets bright, I can take the power down to 500. It'll maintain its brightness. This is easily bright enough to, to read by. And by adjusting frequency, once it's warm, I can get all the way down to 200 milliamps. And it'll keep a nice steady warm glow. So the circuit's been working out really well. It's, uh, I started, my starting point was uh, Gina's Light. You can look that up on the internet. That's J-E-A-N-N-A, -N -N Gina. Her name was Gina Cav, C-A-V. And Gina's Light is a uh, main staple on YouTube now. Uh, basically, it's a circuit like this one, except instead of a 555 timer, uh, Gina used a lopsided 
Jewel Thief as the primary. And she had a special toroid that was particularly powerful. And I'm using uh, generic ingredients. In fact, let's switch over here and uh, take a look at what I uh, did use. So to make this circuit work, I used a toroid that everyone can get. Uh, that toroid is a T226. And it has an L, uh, AL reading of 92. That's a, a measure of inductance that comes from the manufacturer. And that AL number can be used with number of turns to find out how many nano Henry's of inductance a particular inductor is capable of achieving. So what I have here that actually works, my secondary is a 28 gauge magnet wire, 157 feet of it, plus a little extra for lead wire. Uh, that comes up out to 942 turns and a whopping 173 micro henries of inductance. Uh, once that wire is wrapped, uh, that length of 28 gauge wire should read 10.2 ohms. Uh, the primary is just a normal everyday 22 gauge plastic coated wire, only 10 feet, which equates to about 61 turns of wire. Uh, one word of caution on the primary if the primary is too short, the transistor will get very hot very quickly. So you must put enough turns on the primary. I found 61 turns to be a really good number to get a good result and to stop heating in my transistor. The transistor I'm using in my circuit is a 2N3773. It's uh, much more sturdy than the 3055. And these can be gotten uh, cheaply on the internet if you look. Uh, magnet wire, 28 gauge. That's what it looks like. Let's see, anything else I'm forgetting to mention here? Uh, the only other important factor is these... Uh, oh, the bulb I'm using is a 13 watt compact fluorescent light tube. Uh, larger tubes, like this 26-watt uh, tube, you notice it has four rings instead of three. Uh, this is so long, this circuit will not light it. It takes a hell of a lot of voltage to get something, a, a, a tube this long, to activate. And another word of caution, of course, this is high voltage. Uh, be careful if you make this circuit. Don't touch the ends. Uh, even though it's only 5 milliamps, 1,000 volts at 5 milliamps is still quite a lot of energy. Uh, the tubes themselves, uh, CFL tubes contain mercury. Uh, that's how it's lighting up. Uh, uh, you need enough voltage to vaporize that mercury to get electrical connection throughout that tube. Uh, another word of warning about these tubes is the the white coating inside the tube itself, uh, that's a phosphorus coating. Uh, without that coating, if it's chipped or there's big spots or gaps in it, don't use the bulb because uh, this uh, high frequency light emits ultraviolet radiation. It could burn you without the white phosphorus coating on the inside. Okay, those are my words of warning. Other than that, this could make a uh, a nice little reading light or a handheld flashlight. So that's my deal. I can reuse CFL tubes. I'm happy. I'll do some more uh, goofing with this and uh, see if I can't make it better or use less voltage to get a seriously great result. Uh, in the meantime, I am uh, real happy that I can get this really bright. That's all for now. Run out.